he's a child refugee. This one is, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this one. I think that makes sense that Jesus had to run away because children were being targeted to be killed. Remember, Herod the Great targeted any child two years or younger to kill them. Infanticide. That reminds me of something that people do in our culture, except they do it in the womb. It is election season. As with most election seasons, especially the most recent ones, we keep saying, we keep seeing political memes. And there's one that seems to always do the rounds, and it's targeted at white evangelical Christian men who vote a certain way and direction. And I will show this meme in a second, and we're going to go over every single line and see if it's true or false and how we can think about it. And as well-rounded Christian individuals, which is what apologetics is supposed to do, apologetics is supposed to give us a proper worldview formation where we don't fall victim whether it's from the left side or the right side or the middle side or whatever side, the front or the back. We don't fall victim to random talking points, and we have the ability to process through information, uh, both logically and biblically, and have a proper response. There's a bunch of these out there. I'm just responding to one of these. So this is one of those memes that gets circulated. So it, it's somehow trying to create a contrast, right? It's somehow trying to create a contrast between the way that, I don't know, white American evangelicals view Jesus, and then supposedly the historical and biblical Jesus, and how our Christian preferences and ideas and views are somehow at odds with the biblical Jesus. Now, on the left-hand side, properly put, because it is on the left-hand side, uh, and on the right-hand side, maybe properly put, but we don't know, uh, are claims. Things Jesus was and things Jesus was not. Now, Jesus, according to this, was brown, okay? He was Jewish. Um, all Jewish people brown? I'm not sure. Or were all Jewish people brown? Does it matter? We'll see. Uh, he was Middle Eastern, uh, I suppose so. He was a child refugee. He was poor. Jesus was poor. And, and he was also homeless. He was poor and homeless. Okay. He, he was an advocate of loving your neighbor. Where things Jesus was not. I suppose this is what the right believes Jesus was. At least it's the accusation and the claim. And, but Jesus really wasn't these things. That Jesus was white and Jesus was American. I do not know of anyone who is a Christian. I, I actually don't know of anyone who's not a Christian who actually thinks Jesus was an American. It's just like no one. Zero. Zip. None. No one have I ever met. I have met not a person. I have never met any person who thinks Jesus is and uh, Jesus was American, considering that. Jesus existed before America was even a thing. I mean, your, your average person has a way to reason through it. But hey, okay, Jesus wasn't white. The Bible doesn't really tell us the color of Jesus' skin. We don't know how dark or light he was. We, we can properly assume he was probably tanned. Jesus wasn't racist. Uh, oh, okay, Jesus wasn't homophobic. I, I assume the assumption here is that Jesus is accepting of everyone. Jesus wasn't nationalistic. He wasn't rich. He, he wasn't full of hate. And, and he wasn't a Christian. <laughs> let's, let's go through this and, and see whether uh, these things make any sense at all. Was Jesus brown? We really don't know. Let's just say Jesus was a darker complexion than, I don't know, your average European, whatever that means, because there's Europeans that are pretty dark, but that's fine, as if that matters. He was Jewish, correct. Let's not forget that Jesus is ethnically Jewish, and he's a full human being. The Bible says that Jesus is the second Adam, but also Jesus is God. Let's not forget that, because we're going to come back to this, okay? Number two, Jesus is, number three, Jesus is Middle Eastern. Uh, yeah, Jesus is from that region of the world. He's a child refugee. This one 
is, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this one. I think this makes sense that Jesus had to run away because children were being targeted to be killed. Remember, Herod the Great targeted any child two years or younger to kill them. Infanticide. That reminds me of something that people do in our culture, except they do it in the womb. Skipping me, I don't know what the word for it is. Since I can't think of the word, I just say it's the killing of the children in the womb. That people tend to be for that, who are making these sorts of memes, the whole murder of children. Yeah. That Jesus was poor. And here's the thing is that Jesus was a small business owner. He was a carpenter for about 30 years of his life. His family had a small business. And Jesus, at one point or another, took over the small business of his family. And was he poor? I don't know. I don't know how much money he made. The Bible doesn't tell us he was poor. He was a carpenter. So he had a job. Now, Jesus was homeless. Jesus wasn't home. Like, he didn't grow up homeless. And you could even argue everybody in, back in the days were, was poor, except if you were royalty. Jesus was homeless by choice. He chose to live the life of a nomadic preacher. Jesus chose to live the life of an itinerant preacher who survived off of the generous giving of those around him. And the Bible tells us this. And so Jesus calls people to come and follow him in regards to that ministry, and they're going to be on the road, and they're going to do that kind of ministry. And, and so Jesus is by choice homeless. He says the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And that's partly because that's the nature of his three-year ministry, about three-year ministry. He's an advocate of loving your neighbor. But yes, he is, and we can define what loving your neighbor actually looks like. I suppose Jesus probably would not be in favor of just giving things to your neighbor that would encourage him to remain lazy. And I to I'll tell you why I believe all these things, because we're going to get to a point in this conversation that I mentioned already, but we're going to come back to it where it'll make a lot more sense to you. He wasn't white. Uh, that's fine. He didn't need to be because the Bible not only introduces Jesus to us as uh, a human being who's ethic ethnically Jewish and you want to say Middle Eastern, that's fine. But the Bible introduces Jesus to us as the ultimate human being, as the God-man. And so Jesus is not taking sides in regards to brownness and whiteness and whatever other colorness. Jesus has taken on humanity um, upon himself. He is the fullest human that you can possibly be. And whether you're black, brown, white, orange, purple, whatever, transparent, you are human. And that's what the Bible's concerned about. And that's what good biblical theology and sound biblical theology will get you. He's not American. Duh, of course he's not American. It's just, yeah. I don't know why somebody would mention this, but that's fine. You go for it. You can go for it. He's not racist. Clearly, yeah, Jesus is not racist because he is the ultimate human being and he is there to represent the entirety of the human race and not just a skin color. Hey, it's good to see you here on Apologia Center. This is a ministry that's there to provide you, the viewer, with content that's going to be informative for you, that you can learn from and apply into your life as you develop your worldview formation as a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you're more than welcome to be on this channel and maybe be challenged by some of the claims of Christianity, and challenge us with your claims in a friendly, respectful way. I think this is a channel like no other on YouTube, frankly, because of the community we've developed. So if you want to be a part of this community, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you aren't subscribed, join us on Discord and jump onto our Patreon and just be a part of the community. It seems to me that this meme is pretty racist, considering that it's making claims on brownness and whiteness and Jewishness and Americanness and Middle Easternness and all that. Jesus, now here's where it gets very interesting. Jesus is not homophobic. Depends what you mean by that. Does Jesus think homosexuality is okay? No. Jesus very clearly doesn't think homosexuality is okay. How do we know that, Arthur? How do we know that Jesus doesn't think homosexuality is okay? As a matter of fact, Jesus thought, homosexuality was a sin. And one of you might, might say something like, Jesus never spoke about those things. Correct. He never spoke about homosexuality, but he spoke about marriage and divorce. And he spoke about what God's intent has been from the beginning. And he said, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, one man, one woman. And so he has a very clear understanding as to 
what's going on there. But also remember, in proper theology, we believe that Jesus is God, which means all of the Bible is Jesus's revelation to us. Everything Jesus does in the Old Testament, everything that's in the Old Testament, Jesus is a part of. Everything that is in the later New Testament, say apart from the Gospels, Jesus is a part of, his approval is on it. And so you cannot separate, as these things like to do, all of proper Christian thinking on the matter and subject. Is Jesus against homosexuality and does Jesus think homosexual behavior is a sin? Yes. It's all over the Old Testament, over the New Testament. God has an intent to humanity, intent for humanity, intent for what procreation looks like, and all of that. So if you think somebody's saying homosexual behavior is a sin, then Jesus believed that, and I guess you'd be wrong about this. I would just say that's not being homophobic, because there's no phobia of it. It's just good thinking biblically and being accurate to the teachings of the Bible. This next one I find very interesting, that Jesus is not nationalistic. It's hilarious to me. Why is it funny, Arthur, you might ask? And my response is going to be, do you remember Genesis 12 when God selects this guy named Abraham? Jesus is a part of that whole process. Because remember, Jesus is the second person of the triune Godhead. He is God. And so Jesus is a part of the selection of Abraham. And Jesus is a part of the whole process of saying, Abraham, I will bless you and make you a great nation. And I will use your nation and I will make you a blessing to all the nations of the world. And if you read the rest of the Old Testament, one of the things you're going to come across is Jesus establishes a nation state. He calls the Israelites out of Egypt through Moses and establishes them as a nation. And he gives laws that are only for that nation. And as a matter of fact, a vast majority of biblical history deals only with one nation that he calls his select and chosen nation. So he had a certain view that Israel, for example, the Bible says, is God's portion where all the other nations are not. Now, if you think about it like that, you might actually put Jesus in the category of being nationalistic. But there's an end goal to that because the separations, and I would add the ethnocentric racist separations that progressive liberals like to make, like these, in regards to the globalism and unity and all that stuff, we see past because Jesus uses a nation to bring, let's just say God uses a nation and the second person of the Trinity uses a nation to bring about the salvation of the world. And so I don't know what these guys mean nationalistically. Another thing, Jesus is not rich. Correct. When Jesus lived his 30 some odd years on the earth, he wasn't rich. But let's not forget, Jesus said, I have the authority to call down legions of angels if I needed to. When Satan tempted Jesus to give him the kingdoms of this world, we, Jesus rejected it, partly because Jesus is the proper heir and ruler. Remember, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And since Jesus is God, the earth is his. So he's the richest one there is. As a matter of fact, who gives Solomon his riches? Since Jesus is God, he's the one giving those things. When Solomon asks for wisdom, God gives him riches as well, because that's his to give. The earth is the Lord's. The universe is his. And so it all belongs to Jesus. I don't know if you can get any richer than that. He's not full of hate. Correct. Uh, but he is full of righteousness and justice and love. And there will come a day, the Bible says, where Jesus will judge the nations. As a matter of fact, there's a prophecy in Daniel where the one, like the Son of Man, approaches the Ancient of Days. That's the Father. And he is given rulership to judge the nations. Jesus said to the, uh, to the Pharisees and Sadducees when he was being judged, Behold, I see the Son of Man descending on the clouds. That means to judge the nations. The book of Revelation says that out of his mouth comes out a double-edged sword. That is to judge the nations. The book of Philippians says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Some people will take judgment language to be one of hate. And that's just not what the Bible teaches. So clearly he's not full of hate. Clearly he's not full of hate. But don't conflate and confuse judgment and righteousness with hate. And then he's not a Christian. Clearly, because this is like the saddest 
reality of knowledge coming from this end of the political spectrum, where Jesus is the Christ, meaning Messiah. That's where we get the word Christian from. The reason why we are called Christians is because we are followers of Jesus the Christ. And so, therefore, we are called Christian, ladies and gentlemen. So, next time a political meme like this, put on your apologetic hat, tip it to the side a little bit, reason through it, and see through the utter and absolute nonsense of statements like this. And somehow, people trying to make the case that modern white American evangelicals aren't true to Jesus. Let me just say something to all the progressives and yeah, politically and religiously the liberal the liberal folks. You have thrown away the authority of scripture and anything that can come from that in regards to what we can know about God and how we can know God and stand there and make claims about how wrong we are about knowing the God of the Bible, because that stuff can't be trusted. You guys, got a, you guys gave up proper biblical theology in many circumstances about a hundred years ago, giving up things like the physical resurrection of Jesus, the immaculate conception of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, completely ripped and stripped away with what the Bible says about Jesus. And then some of you guys have the audacity to stand there and lecture us who are being biblical and consistent with historic Christianity as to the person of Jesus. So please stop, because frankly, when it comes down to it, you guys aren't very well thought out on these matters, and it could be defeated very easily. It just has been. Give it up. Believe in the biblical Jesus. Believe in the real Jesus. Give your life to him. And I think, generally speaking, your life will be a lot better. And if it's not better on this earth, I can almost guarantee you. As a matter of fact, I can guarantee you it will be better after that.